I always knew I was Iraqi, and in fact what's uh, shocking is to see even before I understood anything about this Israeli, the conflict, the ethnic conflict within Israel, uh, I was so terrified of uh, speaking Arabic outside in the street. I was uh, so conscious uh, that uh, uh, the U European Jews gazing at us for being different, uh, almost uh, not only making fun of us, but really looking us, at us with hostility. My father remembers that uh, when he went to work the, in the early days uh, after arriving to Israel, and there were some other Iraqis, and they were talking in, speaking in Arabic, and their uh, Ashkenazi European Israeli both, boss was saying, um, uh, you're speaking speaking Arabic, this is not an Arab state, this is Israel, we speak here Hebrew. So in a sense the policing, uh, you know, this was among colleagues, friends, uh, there was a policing from the very beginning of our cultural identity and our belonging, and in a sense those kind of uh, experiences became so traumatizing that we internalized that uh, voice or gaze not to listen to Arabic music, not to speak Arabic. But at the same time, we continue doing it at home. So in a sense, I often talk about it as a kind of a schizophrenic existence, as kind of a split personality. You're trying to, to live to a certain kind of Euro-Israeli uh, ideal of identity, while at the same time in your community, you're practicing something completely different. You know, we were, you know at home we were listening to the Arabic speaking station on television, on the radio. Uh, we would hear Um Kulthum, Nava, Al Ghazali, uh, Salima Pasha, you know, this was the music I grew up with, the Iraqi food. I often feel like that the way uh, for my family and my community to maintain their identity at home was music, food, uh, but at the same time in the public sphere they might have fought against racism, but it took many years uh, for them to assert their identity um, uh, in the public sphere. In fact, it was more my generation. Uh, certainly in my writing I have uh, uh, worked on this whole question of cultural identity and asserting my Arabness, my Iraqiness. That was not a simple thing to do, not even until the mid-90s to do that. You were still very much punished in Israel. My mother left Baghdad as a teenager. She was 14 years old and left with the Zionist movement. Um, my father left with his family in 1950 and came to Israel to and settled with his family in a transit camp. My mother was very interested in assimilating into Israeli society, uh, which really meant assimilating into Ashkenazi society. So it was very important to her that we live among European Jews. Therefore, we lived in a very white, what I would say white, Ashkenazi neighborhood in Tel Aviv. Um, the schools were considered to be good. Um, the housing was considered to be respectable. Um, what had happened to me growing up in that neighborhood was that I felt very alienated and very disconnected from my own roots and it was really living some kind of a schizophrenic life where I would come home and my parents conversed mainly in Arabic but also in Hebrew, some kind of a mixture. But I came from playing or being around European children and European teachers, and the gap was very pronounced. Um, the only time that I felt good as a child, when I felt comfortable and accepted, was when I used to go and visit my grandparents, who lived in a suburb of Tel Aviv in Cholon. There, it was, it was comfortable. 
They played Arabic music, they ate their Iraqi food, my grandmother would cook, they would converse in Arabic, um, and they never questioned if I was smart or not. I just, they accepted me for who I was, and that was, that was my saving grace, really.